Hello, this is Sir CJ and welcome to the 21st edition of Physics 9. Uh, in this uh, version of Physics 9, we will cover the following parts. First is associate on discussion and then uh, we will be discussing uh, things, important things about road safety. And then uh, that discussion will lead us to uh, the next part which is uh, connecting uh, the uh, the concept of roads, road safety into the uh, problems that we have been discussing and solving in our sessions so far. So um, we'll be doing that through a sample problem and then I will be asking you to solve your own problem under uh, asso associate problem solving, independent problem solving. And so remember that this uh, session is also based on the 7e-based self-learning module in Science 9, which I wrote. Specifically, you will find these parts on Unit 4, Book Number 20, pages number 26 to 29. We are still covering the following learning competencies. Infer that the total momentum before and after the collision is equal and examine effects and predict causes of collision-related damages and injuries. And so let's now jump in. Hi. So I know that uh, we have been um, kumbaga, uh, doing some kind of transport since the pandemic has uh, already been easing out and the uh, schools are reopening or they have already reopened. Uh, we are now actually, even you learners, uh, traveling right a lot uh, every day. And I'm sure that at some point uh, we were able to uh, like uh, use seatbelts. In the Philippines, it is mandatory that drivers in front uh, and of course of the vehicle and the front seat passengers as well are wearing seat belts. This is a major requirement of the Seatbelt Act of 1999 or the Republic Act 8750. All manufacturers of cars in the country are actually required to install these uh, and uh, the reason for that is that we have to minimize the occurrences of deaths and the uh, severe physical injuries that were caused by, you know, accidents on the road. Um, we have been actually using um, other objects like um, balls and um, in, in our problems. But uh, also there were also some times when we have been using cars and trucks, right, in our examples. So we will be making these examples quite real. And we will be trying to illustrate the safety of wearing seatbelts. Uh, by applying the uh, principles we learned in impulse and the conservation of momentum. Now, uh, in this, in these problems and in the following uh, set parts of the session, we will see passengers who are inside the car. Okay? And these passengers are, of course, since they're, they are inside the car, they're also moving along uh, with the uh, velocity of the car and in the same direction. So say, for instance, if the passenger inside the car that is not moving is sitting down, uh, that means the passenger is also not moving because the car is not moving uh, and uh, there is no direction of, um, of motion because again, the car is not moving. But say for instance the car is moving forward, then the passenger is moving along with the car with the same velocity and direction. And so just uh, imagine if the car is now moving at, say, for instance, 120 kilometers per hour, that's the movement of the car, that's the uh, velocity of the car, then we can also say that the body inside the car is moving at 120 kilometers per hour in the same direction. Okay? So uh, we have to always remember that uh, the uh, velocity of the car is uh, corresponding to the velocity of the body that is inside the car. So... When the car suddenly stops, say for instance, uh, completely by accident, it hit a concrete barrier, uh, the body inside the car uh, must actually stop as well, right? But uh, without, uh, say, a seat belt, that won't happen. The body inside the car is bound to move at the same speed that the car had before the collision so if the body if the car was moving at 120 kilometers per hour and then it suddenly hit a concrete barrier the body inside the car is set to move with the same di with the same velocity 120 kilometers per hour it cannot just 
stop. Okay, it's gonna fly off maybe uh, through the front uh, windshield of the car, uh, or it can it can hit the dashboard. Or the body can hit the dashboard, or the body can also hit the steering wheel, which are all fatal and they can cause death or some severe physical injuries. By wearing a seatbelt, the impulse will occur in a very long interval. So, mapapa prolong yung interval kung sakali man natatama yung head or yung body ng um, passenger sa kung ano mang part ng car, mapapa prolong yun. And so, the uh, force of collision is going to be as well minimized. Now, let us apply what we understood in that discussion in this sample problem. So, let us say that there was a collision between car A and car B that brought car A to a velocity of, from a velocity, uh, actually, to a velocity of 31 meters per second. Now, the 65 kilogram driver, who was the only one inside car A, did not move forward too long as he was restrained by his seatbelt in only 0 0.350 seconds now. The question is, how much force did the seatbelt apply on the driver's body to make this possible? So, I want you to look at the problem again and uh, list down the givens. If you're done, let us now look at the givens. Uh, the velocity of the car uh, before the collision was 31 meters per second. And then its velocity was uh, then zero because yun nga, um, it hit another car. Ayan. And then uh, the mass of the um, of the uh, body of the uh, driver is 65 kilograms. So let us always remember that when I said that 31 and zero are the velocities of the car, we also refer to the velocity of the body. Okay? Now, uh, the time that uh, it took for it for that to happen uh, for the um, exertion of force was 0 0.350 seconds and uh, the force that was applied during this time was exactly what we were what you are going to look for but what kind of formula do you think are we going to use okay we are going to be using impulse and momentum theorem okay so how that looks like um the uh, the problem is an example of an elastic collision. We have to first note of that because we are computing for uh, what involves the momentum of one of the bodies that were involved in a collision. Now, this is much like computing for the momentum of the blue metallic ball after it collided with the first one when we were still discussing elastic collisions. Now, the formula that must be used is um, impulse is equal to uh, the uh, final to the momentum of the second body minus the momentum of the first body. Now we will be uh, expanding the formula for impulse, itong I dito, and we fairly know that it's actually force times time. Ayan. Now we continue our solution. Since we are looking for the force, which is now in the formula before wala siya, but because we expanded the formula for, uh, for impulse, we now have it, we need to get the time transferred to the other side of the equation. And since the um, relationship they have is multiplication, the most effective way of transferring time to the other side would be through division. Very good. We'll be dividing both sides by time. To transfer it to the other side because this will cancel time or t uh, from the left side of the equation and it's shown as follows so what's gonna happen after a while is that uh, we will be substituting the masses and the velocities and the time uh, and then uh, what's gonna happen is we will be multiply multiplying first we'll be subtracting after and then we're gonna be dividing uh, and that's going to be the last uh, part of our uh, solution. Now, before we head towards the next slide, I want you to first perform the substitution of factors. Are you done? Okay. Uh, now, when you substituted the factors, uh, you can uh, you look at it again, and then you look back at this other formula. Okay. Now, uh, this formula is suggesting that there was only one mass given. And it was the mass of the body of the driver. Okay, now, with the, with the kind of setup that you have right now on your answer sheets, 
Just continue doing that solution and let's see if we get the same answer. Now you substitute the given factors on this uh, formula and you will uh, be putting 65 kilograms. Uh, it will be multiplied to the difference of 0 meter per second and 31 meters per second divided by and you will be dividing that product by 0 0.35 we continue our solution and we will be getting 5757.14 kilograms meters per second squared that means that the uh, total force of 5757.14 newtons was applied to the uh, body of the driver and that was actually almost nine times his weight all right now i want you to re-examine uh, the uh, problem by now using the formula that was suggested here so it's just that uh, you have to do it lang by yourself and let's see uh, if you will get the same kind of uh, of answer as we have here in the next uh, independent problem solving practice what if uh, the uh, circumstances was similar to the previous problem but this time we have a passenger or a driver uh, that has 70 kilograms mass take your time in answering this question do not forget to list down your givens your missing factors and then your solution starts with the formula the raw version preferably and then derive the final formula and then of course box your final answer are you done the answer that you should be go that you should be getting is 6200 newtons did you get this correctly okay so uh, that is uh, it for this edition of physics 9 remember that we were able to cover the following we discussed road safety and then we uh, made some discussions related to problems on road safety by applying the principles of impulse and momentum and then i let you do the problem solving on your own through the independent problem solving under associate remember that the um, learning competencies that we're working on are still as follows so we were uh, trying to train ourselves on inferring that the total momentum before and after collision is equal and uh, we were also doing our best to examine effects and predict causes of collision-related damages and injuries. Remember that this edition of Physics 9 is actually based on the 7E-based self-learning module in Science 9. Particularly, you will find these parts on uh, Unit 4, Book Number 20, pages 26 to 29. This has been Sir CJ and I'm hoping that I will see you in the next video lesson. Have a good day.